In this video, we're going to implement some more React router, including an index route and examining exactly how our route structure works. Now we've got a basic understanding of how React router works by having a router parent component and then root child component, which have a path and a component. It's time to create a bit more of a full application. And to do this, we're gonna go ahead and create an app component that is gonna be essentially our app container. We're then gonna import our navbar into that app component and then utilize some more React router functionality. Go ahead and create your app component. You can just create it in the components folder as usual. This component is gonna be a simple stateless functional component. And of course, as always, we need to import React from React. And we're gonna have a const of app. I'm gonna take some props, of course, from our Redux store. And we're simply going to render out a div, close that div off. Within this div, we are then gonna have a h1. And we're just gonna say, this, this is our app component. And you'll see why I'm doing that later on as it's just going to make things clearer when explaining exactly how React Router works. We're then going to render out props.children, which hopefully you're familiar with now. I'm then just going to wrap our h1 and our children in a div as well. Format that and let's export default our app component. With our app component created, Let's import it into our index.js file, and then we can introduce a new concept in React Router of the index root. So let's import app from dot slash components forward slash app. And let's also import an index root from React Router. Now, the purpose of an index root is obviously to have a root that is kind of the default root, if you will, and then to have various children of that root. So let's create an index root so we can see how it works and how and what it gives us. Now to have an index root, we need to declare a new root with a path. And we're gonna give this path just forward slash. And we're gonna say the component, when we go to forward slash, is our app component. Now, Within this root component itself, we are gonna have our child roots. So let's just delete our test root as we're not really using that at the moment. And let's take our users root and make that a child of our forward slash root. So now we have our users root embedded as a child of our forward slash path we should be able to go to just forward slash and get our users and our app component. We're not actually using the index root just yet, but we'll come to that in a moment. Let's just check out our application and see how it is working. And it looks like I've got an error. So a valid React element or null must be returned. Okay, so something obviously wrong with our app component. We're rendering a div. Ah, oh, so I've used curly braces rather than normal brackets. So change those curly braces to normal brackets. Save that and head on back over. Okay, so we now have our app component we just created and our fetch users component as a child of that app component. And the reason we have that is obviously because we're, we're rendering props.children. So any children that come into our app component are gonna get rendered out in our app component. And if you look here, what are we doing? We've got a root of our app component and we have a child of that app component. So our user's root is getting rendered in our app component. So now we could also go to forward slash and we just get our app component because we now no longer have 
any children of our app component. But again, if you go to forward slash users, you now get our users component. And that's the way routes work embedded in other routes. Now, if we were to have an index route, for example, which we're gonna go ahead and create now. So an index route. With an index route, you don't specify the path. You just specify the component itself. So let's just specify the component. And do you know what? We'll create a new component, actually. Let's create a home component, as that's sort of normally what you have at your root index. So let's import our app component, sorry, our home component first. And then we can go ahead and create that quickly. Okay, so with our home component as our index root and imported in our index.js, let's just quickly create that home component. So home.js import react from react const home equals props add normal brackets remember not curly braces and let's just have a div saying welcome home and let's close that div off and export default our home component save that Okay, so now we have an index root. So in theory, whenever we go to just forward slash, this home component should be rendered out. So what this means is we have our router, as you know, and we now have a root of forward slash. So whenever we go to forward slash, we get our app component, which as we've seen is what happens and what we expect. But now we've got an index root as well, Whenever we go to just forward slash, we will also get our home component. So if we now go back to the browser and refresh, you will see that when we're at forward slash, we get our app component, but we also get our welcome home component, which is what we'd expect because this is our index root. So now if we go to forward slash users, what's gonna happen is our users component gets rendered but our app component stays so you can see that we have that kind of seamless flow obviously it's not great at the moment because we just have one component but we just have our app component and we have our welcome home so you can see kind of how it starts to work you start to have a parent root and you have this consistent component and then you have child roots and you can now use forward and back and sort of switch between the components and that's via hash history and just to make things a bit clearer i'm just going to make this div a h1 and let's just refresh and let's go to forward slash so there we can see so we've got our app component and our welcome home component and then if we click back we go to our users component and then we can render out our users so that's how an index route works. It says whenever we go to this path, obviously we want to render our app component when we go to forward slash, but I also want to render our home component as our index component. So you can imagine that our app component is just going to be our big container. And in our app component, we might have our nav bar, for example, something that's going to be consistent throughout our application. And then we also want our home to be our index route. Because obviously when we go to our app, the first thing we want to see is our home page. And then of course, when we go to forward slash users, we want to see our users page. And I've just realized I've made a slight minor error here. So on our path for forward slash users, we don't actually need that forward slash because we already have this forward slash prepended here. So what this basically means is that when I go to blah.com forward slash I get app and then when I go to blah.com forward slash users I get this component so when I had this it was in theory going to the same URL but it will get confused if you have I don't know blah forward slash blah because that kind of forward slash at the end of it is is kind of implied so just to clarify that when you have your roots, you have your index root here, or just your forward slash, for any child roots, you don't actually need that forward slash. You just want to say 
the actual text rather than the forward slash itself. And to just show you how this works and to show that it does work indeed, uh, let's just go to forward slash blah. So we've now got a, an entirely new route. So now when we go to forward slash blah, we're going to get our app component again and of course our home component. But then when we go to forward slash blah, forward slash users, we will get our users component and our app component. So just to clarify, in the individual routes, you don't actually need that forward slash at the start of the path. Let's just check this out in the browser. So let's just refresh and let's go to root. So this is our standard forward slash. So now if we go to forward slash blah, we get the same application, of course, because that's what we're rendering out. And then when we go to forward slash blah, forward slash users, we get our users component again, because we now have that second root. So that's just to show that you can have various routes and you can go as deep as you like here. So you can go blah, 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 and that will still work. And then the URL will just be blah, 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 users. And let's just show that. So let's go back to root and refresh and then go to forward slash blah, 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 blah. We'll get our index root and then we we'll go to forward slash blah, 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 users. We get our users list component. So you can have multiple routes within the application. Generally, you only have one, but that just depends on your application and what you actually want to do. So let's just delete that root there. So just to clarify exactly what we've done in this video, we've implemented a root, our index root and our users root within that index root. So we have a root of just forward slash and we get our app component, which just has our H1. When we go to forward slash and then we pass in a child, a prop, another root, or an index root that then gets rendered out depending on the path. So when we have just forward slash, we also get our index root and that's our home component, which is just a H1. And of course, because our app component renders out its children, we get our welcome home component as well. And then of course, when we go to users, we're no longer on our index root. So we get our users component as well as our app component. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and create our nav bar. We're going to place that into our app component, and then we're going to have a new route to our user profile component that we built earlier. That way we can click on one of the users and we'll render out our user profile page component and we'll see how we can have multiple routes and that consistent nav bar and get a mini single page application that flows and has a really nice user experience.